All right, so our last section in intelligence is going to be talking about genetics um, and, and environmental influences on intelligence, including things um, like gender differences and bias. Um, so twin studies and adoption studies, obviously, you kind of remember what we talked about before, are the gold standard in, in studying all of this stuff. You know, identical twin studies are super important because we have the same gene set. So um, any dif differences then would be most likely attributed to environment. Um, and then adoptive children's studies are also important for intelligence because it helps us figure out what happens um, genetically in terms of deviation towards biological parents or um, the environmental influences that the adoptive parents um, are going to tell us, or towards the adoptive is an environmental factor. Um, now, heritability, okay, this is an important term that we need to understand, and um, heritability is the extent to which differences among people are attributed to our genes. Okay, so we're not talking about, when we're talking about heritability, like her traits that are passed down, we're talking about the differences, like to what extent are our genetic, um, our intelligence differences attributed to genes, okay? Um, we never talk about one person, but rather why groups of people say. And we won't say, you know, you don't say in, with intelligence and genetics what percent of an individual's in, intelligence is inherited, but rather, you know, if, if we are talking about, you know, 50% heritability, it means that 50% of the differences are because of genetic components. Um, so that's an important definition to make sure you know that heritability is the extent to which differences among people are attributed to genes. So what does this look like? Well, if we're talking about heritability of IQ scores, um, what we can see is that identical twins reared together have the highest correlation of similarity on their intelligence scores followed then by identical twins reared apart. Okay, and what this shows us is that there is some environmental effect playing a role here. Um, followed next by fraternal twins reared together. Um, remember, fraternal twins are basically siblings born at the same time. Um, so, and then followed by siblings reared together. Um, and then individuals, uh, unrelated individuals, reared together. Now, what would the difference be between fraternal twins reared together and siblings reared together? Well, remember, fraternal twins are going to be raised more in the same environment than siblings would be. Um, just time, place, you know, all of those parenting styles with first and second child and all of those things kind of play a role. So again, identical twins reared together have the highest correlation, with, which tells us that there is a genetic component to, um, to um, intelligence. And then for identical twins reared apart gives us some evidence to show that there are some environmental factors as well. Um, so what are some of those environmental factors? Well, we know that early environmental factors play a huge role. Okay, enrichment, okay, targeted enrichment, targeted training. The more you are exposed to enriching environments, the more um, your brain is working, those neural connections are working, and it's going to increase your potential for intelligence. We also know that schooling plays a huge role. The longer that you are in school, um, starting with preschool, kids that go to preschool tend to succeed better in, um, in later on in school. They tend to go farther in school. They tend to struggle less. Um, that's why we actually started this Project Head Start, which is a um, state-sponsored preschool for people that can't afford preschool. And, you know, it's, it's a super important, and we know more and more that the earlier schooling environment you have, the more, you know, the more su academic success that you have, and then the long-term um, long intelligence um, stability we see as well. Now, what about gender differences? Um, you know, everybody always talks about boys are better at this and girls are better at this. Well, actually, studies have shown that girls are score higher on spelling, verbal ability, nonverbal ability, sensation detecting, emotion detecting, math and spatial aptitudes. So girls are, you know, do tend to score higher. What do boys score higher in? Well, studies say underachievement, which, boys, this is not to say that you are not good at any of these things. And actually, these studies are fairly deceiving because if you look at um, individual subcategories which it, within any of these categories, you're going to see that, you know, the, the girls might be better at one aspect of verbal ability where boys might be better at another aspect of it. Um, 
So this, you know, all of these citations of girls are better at this and boys are better at this are actually fairly inaccurate. And, you know, society likes to pinpoint in on things that are shocking. And for so long, you know, women were you know, told that they were less than for various reasons. And so when all of a sudden girls started to perform um, where they, you know, at, you know, kind of at level with boys, everybody was like, oh, girls, look, girls. Well, studies actually show us that there really are no significant differences between boys and girls' performances. Um, and that a lot of this information really is just, you know, sensationalism to make us, you know, to make us, um, to make us talk about it, I guess. Now, one thing to point out though is where did where did these differences, you know, these the idea that there are differences come from? Well, that's environmental factors. You know, women were um, not educated as well as men for a long time in our history, and so of course, when they performed on tests, they did not perform as high. But once we started to see it even out, that's when we started to see things even out as well. Now, another thing to note is that we do see more differences when we go to the high extremes. Um, so we do start to st we do start to see some more um, a divide between men and women abilities when we do start to go to the extremes. I um, mean that's one of the reasons when you always think of these like you know chess greats and these math greats they tend to be men. Well that's also interesting that it's predominantly only in this country. If you go to some place like China, there are a ton of women who stand out among the men in a lot of those same categories. So a lot of the gender differences um, are actually perceived gender differences, and a lot of them are based off of society and socialization and expectations of society. Um, what about ethnic differences? Well, again, just like we talked about, there really are no ethnic differences among, um, you know, in terms of IQ. Yes, there are variations in abilities and there are variations in levels, but again, most of those go back to the idea of environment and the environmental differences that are there and the enrichment opportunities and things like that. And then you also have to take into consideration the cultural. You know, you know what we here consider intelligent is that really as intelligent as somebody or more intelligence of somebody you know in in Africa or in a tribal community in Mongolia where they're what they consider intelligent we might not do well on because it's not with our cultural norms so again there's really no differences in terms of um, I mean there's really no there's no major glaring differences statistically speaking in intelligence levels and most of the perceived um, differences do come from this idea of um, environmental factors playing a role. Now what about bias? Okay so there's two kind of meanings of bias. There's the popular sense of bias and then there's the scientific sense of bias. The popular sense of bias you know is kind of what you know when I say the word bias what do you think of? You know you're against somebody. Now the scientific sense of bias is has to do more with the actual procedural procedures of taking tests and creating tests and things like that. Some things we do know about bias is that there is something called the test taker's expectation. More specifically, we call it the stereotype threat. And basically, this is a self-confirming concern that one will be evaluated based on a negative stereotype. So, for instance, if I go in to take a test and... I have this stereotype floating around in my head that blondes are dumb and blondes are dumb and I go in and I'm interviewing for a job or I'm taking some kind of an assessment test and all I can think about is like, oh my gosh, look, they're going to look at me and they're going to see that she's blonde and they're not going to take me seriously and, you know, like everything I say, they're going to say, oh my gosh, she's blonde, she's blonde. Well, is that going to hurt my test taking? And research has said that yes, it will hurt your test taking. That if you go in thinking that you're going to be evaluated on a negative stereotype, that it will you will start to self-confirm that and you will actually perform lower. And it's really kind of a sad thing and we'll come back and talk about this a lot more when we talk about social psychology. But it is something to keep in mind. All right, so that's it for this section and 